Uni can be impossible sometimes. It can be so difficult and overwhelming. Sometimes it feels like it swallows you up, spits you out. It's kind of brutal, sometimes for sure. But now I'm coming to the end of my university career. Thank God. I feel like I have some sort of moral duty to impart the wisdom that I have acquired over my time at university that has made it go at least a little bit smoother. My credentials in this particular area of surviving university are that I almost have. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a bit then. Hopefully I will. Like actually knock on wood. Like <laughs> now I said I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself. I'm coming to the end of my final year. I've got, I think, two months left now until I'm completely finished. I study law. I'm in the University of Bristol and I wear glasses. I feel like that kind of makes me a nerd, right? I mean, they are here right now, but they're so disgusting. Can you see the amount of shit on my lens? That's a little bit about me. I've made a little plan of the things I wanna share with you today. So if you see me looking this direction, that's why. The way that I'm going to share with you my advice is in relation to studying. So things you do before studying, during studying and after studying. Before you start to study, the main overall thing that you've got to take care of, and like this I'm sure if you've looked at any other sort of media about surviving uni, this will have been hammered home, but I want to add to that because it is so important, oh my goodness wellness. I feel like it's been a corrupted term a little bit, but just in general, being well in your mind and your body is huge. It makes such an impact no matter what you're doing, but especially with university when things can get so intense so quickly, having just a baseline of your health is invaluable. I make sure personally I have multivitamins just to make sure I've got all my bases covered. Another thing that I take every morning, which I spoke about in my last video, if you didn't see that, I'm sure I'm plugging it somewhere. I take this productivity shot called Magic Mind every single morning. It's based in matcha and it's got a bunch of nootropics in it as well so it's just like a fantastic concoction of goodness i feel like it's made a massive difference in terms of my focus and my energy levels throughout the day when i'm studying i'm gonna grab a bottle and show you guys it because you'll see it's so cute it's this how cute is that this has become a huge part of my everyday studying routine and wellness routine so if you're interested in trying magic mind out then please use my discount code chloe hunkin 20 or the link in my description for 20 percent off and if you never bought magic mind before then that 20 percent will stack onto the original first purchase discount that they have so it's actually 56 percent off and if you don't like it you can get 100 percent of your money back so it's definitely worth a shot if you oh wow that was that was a good pun there. It's definitely worth giving it a shot to see whether it works for you. Kind of following on from using Magic Mind, another consideration in terms of your wellness is how much caffeine you're drinking. I used to drink so much caffeine, it was ridiculous. And obviously if you drink too much caffeine, it has bad effects on your heart and also on your anxiety levels and all that kind of stuff. Like I would get the shakes all the time. Also having less caffeine means that you can have better sleep, which is so, so important. I used to be a night owl, like sleep at 2 a.m. earliest. I kind of liked having that sort of peace at the end of the day when it felt like time stopped for a sec and I could have my own space. I know it kind of felt like a break almost that I feel like sometimes with uni you never feel like you can probably have. But since shifting that 2 a.m. to 11 or 12 and then waking up at 7, 8 rather than 10 has been really, really amazing in terms of me feeling way more productive throughout the entire day, not feeling as sluggish. That's something I recommend trying out. If you're a night owl like I used to be, try and shift it back just a bit and see whether that makes you feel more productive. When shifting it back though, don't sacrifice hours. Always make sure you get between, I think, seven to 10, but obviously adjust that accordingly to whatever feels best for you. That's the main thing in all of this is do what's best for you and what feels genuinely like the most effective thing for you. The final piece of advice that I have in this before studying section is go out. And when I say go out, I don't just mean like go to the pub, whatever. That's also amazing. Like have a good social life. That's such a good thing for your mental health. But I mean more when it comes to having a lot of work that you're doing. Even just walking to a study space rather than just staying inside in your room. Life seems so much smaller and so much more stressful when you coop yourself up and you lock yourself in your room and all you do is think of uni. I've definitely fallen into that trap, especially when it comes to exam season. But even when it is exam season, it's really important that you don't just shut out the entire world when you've got exams. So that's all my advice for before you start studying. Now, during studying, your environment makes a huge difference. So that's whether you go out to a library or a cafe or you stay in your room, 
The same thing goes, whether you're comfortable. When you're uncomfortable and you're studying, it can distract you from your work. So yeah, just make sure you're not sacrificing that for the aesthetics. Don't just force yourself out if you feel like that's not what you want to do, because you probably won't want to do it. When you get to the location that you set out to work at, you're probably going to be way less productive than if you just listen to yourself. I honestly do think like a lot of the during studying is listening to your intuition, coupled with not being too lenient on yourself. Sometimes you'll think that your intuition is saying, I don't want to work, but that's not true. You just don't want to work. Like obviously if you had the choice you probably wouldn't be there's like a good balance between listening to your intuition and being patient with yourself and also being disciplined that goes for the environment you choose to study in that goes for the topics that you decide to work at on that particular day there have 100 percent been times where i forced myself to do one topic when i know that i was not going to do as much reading in that as another topic that i'm a little bit more interested in in the moment this doesn't really go for exam season but i think more generally if there's a bunch of things you need to do and there's not something that's more glaringly a priority then just do what you are more interested in doing because you'll get through that and you'll feel so much more satisfied because you've got stuff done again there's a balance there between discipline and intuition but i think that when i forced myself to do work that i kind of didn't want to do at all and there's other work that needed doing that i would way rather have done i always look back and think i should have done the other work you know what I'm saying? I loved working in libraries for a bit, then it was cafes, and now I prefer working at home. I like to make sure that my environment's really clean. When it gets messy, I notice a shift in my ability to concentrate. I'm also a big smell girl. Does, that doesn't sound good. I love having a really nicely smelling room. I have my little diffuser here from Muji, if you can see. I put essential oils in that and then it makes a lovely mist that makes my room smell amazing. I think smells make such a big difference for me. Sometimes it's like a tactile thing. Maybe you prefer working in your bed than at a desk. Maybe it's a sight thing with lights because I know that can be a thing for me, especially in the nighttime. I need to have my lights fully blaring or else I'll fall asleep. So considering your environment is a huge thing. This is kind of a sensory thing as well, but I think deserves its own category. Music. I love listening to music while I study. I don't tend to be distracted by music. And in fact, it actually makes the studying experience a lot, a lot more fun. Another thing that people like to do is time blocking. I personally found time blocking really stressful and when I started doing it I found it to be kind of a waste of time because you spend a lot of time planning stuff out and then no time actually doing the stuff. The issue for me was that I'd schedule time to do something and then I wouldn't get it done in that time and I would have allowed myself a lot of time to do it but for some reason it just didn't click and it did not mesh with the, the way that I work at least. So don't force yourself into any particular study regime that you feel like doesn't fit because in my experience it just made me way more stressed. I feel like having some sort of structure is super super important and so so if it's not time blocking, then maybe it's this. I'm gonna give you a little Notion tour. I love my Notion. I'm very, very proud of it. I've curated it. So let me talk you through it. Because I'm in third year, I called it third year baby. I've got a lemon. I like lemons. I think it's a cute icon. And then this very dark academia looking banner. I've got my daily schedule here and the AAA is eight hours for rest, like sleep and play. I don't think those are the actual labels for those eight hours, but that was the frame of reference for me. So I've sort of planned out very roughly like what I would do every hour of the day. Do I stick to this? Sometimes no, not at all. Sometimes I work past 10 if I feel like I couldn't concentrate before 10.30, like for example, and I adjust accordingly. This is a pretty good structure though, in terms of being able to have breaks and then getting like a solid amount of work done every day. Then my morning routine and my night routine, but if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth version of both of these things, I have them up on my channel. If you're interested, check them out. I have this timeline view of all the stuff that I want to study. This has been really, really helpful for me because I've been able to shift stuff around and see, oh my God, like I've got this deadline here, like I need to do this stuff before this day. But it also takes the pressure off a bit because I can see how much time I have to do certain things. So I love this. This has been very helpful. And then I have everything that needs doing and it is just tables of everything that needs doing. So this is my dissertation. This actually has not been updated at all. But for all my other unit reading things, I have filtered it. So I've got all my learning cycles in here. I've written out all the reading and stuff that I've been set and then put the date in that I've done it, when I've done it and then tagged the document to that notion table so that I can look at it as a frame of reference if I'm looking and I'm revising. Because I've done most of my criminology work, I have just tucked it all away so it's nice and clean. And I've got an embarrassing amount of IT work left to do, but anyway, no looking at that, thank you very much. All of the unit tables are the same. So I've got my reading and exercises and lectures that I've all written out. Having that tick off system, I don't know, it scratches like an itch in my Neanderthal brain 
just like a good reward system thing. I don't know. I get that dopamine hit when I realise that I've done something good. And then after the tables, I've got a checklist. The L stands for lecture, so I'm waiting for the lectures to happen and then I'll be able to finish. I really love seeing the pink take up the white. Like, I can really gauge how much I've got done. And then I've got my due dates. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a lovely reminder that my first summative essay is being released in a week and a half in IT law and you saw how little I've done on that. Anyway, that's my notion. I'm pretty proud of it. Honestly though, all it is is just a bunch of databases and that's it, I manually put everything in. So there's no magic formula that I've done for it. It definitely took time putting stuff in. I feel like not having the time constraints and instead having the timeline view at the very top. That's my version of time blocking. Like it's time blocking over a few days. That's during studying. Now, after studying. I am huge on rewards. I love little treats. I like ordering stuff and then it's showing up at my door. It's a nice little surprise. And it doesn't have to be material things as well. Rewarding myself with an hour of reading or one film at the end of a lovely productive studying day helps motivate me through it. And in fact, actually, not just a good studying day. At the end of a studying day, because punishing yourself is no way to get stuff done. That turns into quite a vicious cycle, I find. Like if I don't do anything that's fun for me after a day of studying because I I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. It turns into a cycle of just being constantly stressed and constantly miserable and having no relief. So whatever it is, don't look down on anything that you like to enjoy. If it, even if it's something that you find embarrassing, do it. Make it something that you look forward to. Making a nice dinner, making a playlist, binging your favorite YouTuber. I've got one that I recommend. Whatever it is that isn't destructive. So that's all the advice I have in terms of surviving uni. I think that probably the main thing to take away from this video, if I had to boil it down to one thing, is to listen to yourself in a balanced way. Because at the end of the day, what you're working towards is for you. I feel like being satisfied with the end degree that you get is as important as being satisfied with the entire process. You'll get through it, I promise. If I've got through it, so can you. It will be over before you know it. And I can say that with 100% certainty. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to them. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Mm.